Hello, my name is Bill here, President and Founder of PowerStrokeHelp.com. I'm going to talk a little bit about the cooling system in a 6 liter and, and what it does and, and, and how to maintain it. It's very important that the cooling system in the 6 liter truck works correctly. Okay, uh, Any component that fails inside this system or doesn't work correctly or is compromised in any way uh, can lead to uh, catastrophic failures in terms of VGR cooler failure, oil cooler failure, head gasket failure, and ultimately if you really don't pay attention you can melt the engine down. So we're going to talk a little bit about the theory and how all this works. We're going to do some, we're going to show some steps you can take right now in your driveway uh, to make sure that your cooling system is working correctly. To truly understand the SIGS leader and its vulnerabilities in the cooling system, you got to understand the oil cooler. The oil cooler is around which most of the problems uh, evolve. Now, coolant plays a huge role in this. When the 2003 Model 6 liter was introduced, there were several technologies that were introduced with it. One of them was coolant, a propylene glycol system uh, that worked well on, on paper and in testing, but never really quite delivered in the real world. Now, since then, Motorcraft has switched over to this premium gold coolant that they have now, which is an ethylene glycol based system. But the problem that they had in the early systems, uh, and they have it today but not as much, is that the inhibitor package, the particulates that are dissolved in the solution of the coolant uh, under high heat and stress would actually precipitate and become solids in the solution. Now this is a real big problem because uh, as you can see here, this chalkiness that's all around the edges of this uh, oil cooler here, that's inhibitor. That's the stuff, the actual gold in the gold coolant uh, is precipitating out and, and becoming a solid again. In addition to cooling the engine traditionally like a gasoline engine, uh, the coolant is called upon to also cool engine oil hence the engine oil cooler. Engine oil cooler is located right underneath your oil filter. Your oil filter housing sits right on top of this thing. What it is is it's a heat exchanger between engine oil and engine coolant. They both flow through here. Now your, your engine oil goes in one end and comes out the other and your, and your engine coolant goes in one end and comes out the other. And what happens is, as we can see in this cutaway here, they flow through these little passages. Now the thicker passages is, is coolant and the thinner passages are oil. They're layers that are sandwiched between each other, okay, an oil layer, a coolant layer, an oil layer, a coolant layer, and as a result, the heat is exchanged from the engine oil into the engine coolant, and the water pump pushes it through the engine and out to the radiator and cools it off. This is a, a, a very important thing to understand, because if you have a coolant that is, is old or, or has gotten to a point in its lifespan where it's starting to have the solids uh, uh, precipitate out and they flow through here and start clogging this heat exchanger well that's the beginning of a real serious problem okay because of the way the engine coolant goes in through the top and back out through the top you will see uh, particulate matter start to, to build up in the bottom of the cooler down in the bottom of the cooler underneath the housing here so uh, as a result if this if this engine oil cooler uh, is compromised 20, 30, 40, 50 percent. This is all filled up with particulate matter down here. That's going to severely compromise the effectiveness of the cooling system in your truck. The other thing that's a problem is your EGR cooler. Now this is an early EGR cooler. You can see there's big tubes in there. These things never failed on the O3s. Now the O4s have a whole lot more surface area. Now, you actually have exhaust flowing through the outside and engine coolant flowing through here, okay? So if the, if the engine coolant is not flowing correctly through the cooler, then that means it's going to be slowed down in the EGR cooler. You still got all this thousand degree exhaust gas traveling through this thing. It's going to cause a compromise in the welds inside this cooler. Now these things were so big in this early one that, you know, I don't think they clogged. In fact, I know they didn't. But these, they, they would have a problem in these later ones, 2004 and up. Uh, and it comes from particulate matter accumulating in the oil cooler. So engine coolant quality is absolutely crucial. Now Ford Motor Company says this will go 100,000 miles. I change it at 30, 35. Hey, look, if you've gone 80,000 miles on your truck and you hadn't changed your coolant, now's a good time. More importantly than that, you want to do an inspection of the coolant. You want to drop some coolant out of your truck. You want to drop it into a good, clean pan, really, really clean pan. Um, you know, uh, uh, hopefully one that's yellow or, or light colored. A black pan will not 
not really work for this. But you see that particulate in there? You see that stuff floating around? Well, that's going to end up in the bottom of your oil cooler, and it's going to cause a problem. It's going to cause an overheating condition that will lead to, you know, EGR cooler failure, head gasket failure, and if you really don't pay attention, you're going to melt the engine down. This is absolutely crucial. So the first thing we need to do in terms of our spring uh, maintenance on the coolant system of the 6 liter is to drop some coolant out and take a good hard inspection of it. Now let's go take a look under the hood of the vehicle at the things to look for. Okay, before you even pop the hood on the vehicle, you want to take a look at your grill and your and your AC condenser out here to make sure that there's nothing blocking it, a lot of bugs and whatnot. Now's the time to clean this out. Don't take a pressure washer and just start blowing the bugs back into the into the condenser because that isn't going to help. You actually got to clean them out a little at a time and uh, to make sure that air is flowing through the radiator correctly. The other thing is, you know, if you have any leaks that's dripping on the ground, you really have got a problem you've got to address here. Take a good hard look at what's going on. When you get underneath the hood of the vehicle, you want to check and see if there's any cracks in the bottle, if there's any sort of white residue around the edge of the bottle. When you do your underhood inspection, pay special attention to this upper hose. This is a telltale sign of problems in the cooling system. Is the hose soft? Is it stretched out here? If it's stretched out and there's a, there's a lot of uh, uh, residue around the cap here, uh, then it, you may have a head gasket or EGR cooler problem. You're going to have to investigate further on that. But if this hose is stretched out or if it's soft or anything like that, uh, you're going to need to uh, uh, think about replacing some hoses. The other place that these things like to leak, right over here behind the engine oil fill cap, there is a heater control valve. The heater control valve uh, likes to leak on these things. So take a good hard look over here and make sure that there's no coolant dripping or there's no telltale signs. Also, when you're looking at it, look around in this area here, right on top of the engine, to see if there's any, it might be any white residue or anything like this from coolant that's been flying around underneath the hood uh, that would possibly show you have a, a compromised water pump. Uh, this, this would be time to take a good look at that. And you know, obviously, if you're losing coolant, you're using coolant, uh, if the coolant level is low and you put some in it and it goes back to being low again, then there's some other things that need to be looked at. So once we've done our inspection, now what's our course of action? Well, the first thing is is flush your coolant. I recommend doing it every 35, 40,000 miles. Hey, look, if your truck has 80,000 miles on it, you've never done it, well, there's no time like now. Okay, Ford Motor Company says the coolant is good for 100,000. And it is, except that it gets particulates in it. So the only way you can get it out is really by flushing. It's kind of like changing oil. Uh, think of it like that. You're just getting all of the dirty stuff out and put some clean stuff in. Flush it thoroughly. And the last thing is, if you've gotten to a point now, you got a bunch of miles on the truck, uh, and you drop the coolant out, and there's a lot of crap in it and whatnot, uh, you know, I would go ahead and put an oil cooler on it. I would just do it as a proactive thing. You got 120,000 miles on it, the coolant's never been changed, it's full of this chalky dust and stuff. Well, that stuff's all in your oil cooler, okay? Change your oil cooler. Change your EGR cooler at this point. If, you're, if your laws in your state allow it, I would do an EGR cooler delete. And also change your thermostat. A thermostat is a 100,000 mile item, okay? It needs to be changed. Of course, here at Power Stroke Specialty, we'd be happy to take a look at your truck for you. We can make this assessment. We're professionals. This is what we do every day. Uh, please give us a call at 770-931-4070. Uh, make an appointment. We'll be happy to help you in any way we can. The 6 liter is a fantastic engine, but if you don't pay attention to the cooling system in this truck, boy, I'll tell you what, it can get expensive quick. Do this inspection. Flush your coolant. And if you need an EGR cooler or an oil cooler, now's the time to do it before you get halfway to Orlando with your whole family and your camper uh, and a truck breaks down and ruins your vacation. Give me a call, 770-931-4070 if you'd like to have us do a free inspection of your coolant system.